There are just a few days left in Comerican's funding drive to become a registered company based in Long Beach, California. Support the production of original content that explores Kamai America. Support Comerican. Watch our video at Indiegogo or go to Comerican.com for more information. I'm talking with Pete Penn. He's a photographer. His work has recently been featured in Time Magazine and the New York Times. What led you to focus on the uh, Cambodian diaspora? It it is um, is personal, you know. That has always been a project that kind of transcends anything else for me because it's so existential and so personal. Uh, I I was born like many Cambodians my age in in Khao Dang, the refugee camp, the largest refugee uh, camp in Cambodia, on the border of Cambodia and Thailand. And I immigrated here with my parents in the mid '80s. Um, it's the very, you know, it's a standard Cambodian American experience uh, for people my age. Um, and the work, I mean, you know, the 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 diaspora, I guess, um, I don't know, resonates for me in a way that's so incredibly important, you know. And I feel this this need to not so document it, though, but to express my my feelings and my engagement with what it means to be Cambodian American. Okay, let's take a look at some of the photos that are featured in your essay. I met him last year in Philadelphia during my new year. Um, and uh, his name is Shorty. Uh, I ran into him. Uh, he was playing Clock Cloak and um, the my readers will understand and know what Clark Cloak is. And I saw that tattoo in his hand while he was playing. Um, and, you know, I mean, of course it would be a visual reference, uh, but it's um, Killing Fields. Um, and one hand, one fist is of Cambodia, and the other one is uh, what I assume to be Philadelphia at the time. Uh, but, you know, obviously it can be anything. It could be the states in general, uh, the inner city. Um, and, and that resonated for me, like, really, really strongly. Um, because of that, that generational transfer, you know, that, that inheritance of that history, um, which this person felt so strong about that he tattooed that on his fist. That's in Long Beach, California. And, um, I, I grew up in Stockton in Long Beach. Um, I was raised in Stockton and I went to high school in Long Beach. Um, and that's a, a spot in a, a strip, uh, there's a canal behind it, um, and that's called the Ditch. And the, the Ditch was infamous during the gang wars in the, in the 90s as a place where a lot of people were killed. Uh, and I was visiting someone um, who was a, uh, the cousin of a friend of mine who was killed, um, who was shot kind of randomly by a gang member um, who lived in one of those buildings there on the left side. Um, and it was quite poetic as I was driving by, these birds were, these pigeons were flying. Um, and pigeons, for me, <laughs> birds flying have kind of a, uh, a visual metaphor of a melancholy. Um, but yeah, that area was, um, yeah, the Cambodian gangs met there in the ditch, um, had their meetings there, and Hispanic gangs also had their meetings there too, and there was a lot of shootings. And this goes back to the first image, you know, this, this, this idea of, 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 of trauma. Um, but it, obviously it resonates. I mean, it res it's just very, very similar. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's this issue of, like, how, how do you capture um, or how do you photograph visually, how do you try to represent visually um, something in the past? You know, that, that image for me connects to the violence on the streets here in Long Beach that people of my generation, you know, grew up in, um, which is very, very ironic given you know, our history and the circumstances of our resettlement. Very much so, I think, is directly related to that. That was photographed in the Bronx. Um, that was recent, actually, last year. Um, and that was a family that I was introduced to. Um, and that image is, is symbolic for me. Um, because of the body language of the two individuals. 
um, the the grandmother is bedridden. She she can't actually move out of her bed, um, and the grandson um, uh, seated in front. Uh, she has her her head down. He has his head up. There's a couple of things going on in that photo, but the most important for me is this idea of of this generational divide uh, between herself and her grandson. And again, this this resonates for me personally. Um, I don't have the photo here, but um, there's a one of the first portraits I took, one of the first photos I took for this was of my grandmother, um, and it was a studio portrait. Um, and this woman had reminded me of her. Um, I don't speak Khmer. You know? um, I was raised in a home where my parents only spoke to me in English. Um, and I, I like ironically learned Khmer while I was in college. Um, you know, but it was a very different, I mean, the, the language, of course, is fundamentally different. Uh, but it goes back to this idea of a lack, you know, this, this discord, this, this, this severance, this historical and cultural severance between the generations, um, where this gentleman is in the Bronx and I am, you know, quote unquote, American, um, but his mother, his grandmother, um, are, they're still in Cambodia. Okay, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the Cambodian American community on your photos? It's, yeah, you know, it's 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 mixed at first, and um, you know, this is what's very fascinating about photography or documentary photography in, in particular is that it's a Western medium, right? Um, the the language um, is is Western. Um, it doesn't sort of translate to to Cambodians, um, particularly to older Cambodians. Um, I had a, um, an informal exhibition in, and I, I, this is part of like this whole project in terms of bringing it to the community. Um, in the Bronx in this, uh, December of last year, just a couple months ago, where I printed out a lot of the photos that I've been taking. Um, and, um, including, you know, like the people that were there that showed up, um, and the first reaction that I got initially was uh, someone said, "Where are the real photos?" Because you know? <laughs> they they had expected, you know, a very, uh, you know, your wedding photos, um, you know, just straight, non-candid images, you know, high flash, um, where people look in the camera and they smile, um, and that's you know not really documentary photography, so. It is a struggle to, um, you know, to connect in that way, um, to have that translate visually. Um, and over the course of that conversation, you know, I was able to explain uh, to people exactly what I, I'm, I intend to do, what I'm trying to do, and what the photos mean. You know, because there's a fundamental, there's, there's, there, there, I mean, not to sound pretentious or anything like that, though, but like. You know, we what we try to do as documentary photographers is that we we we're visual storytellers. You know, and 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 you're given a frame, and you you try to within that frame narrate a story of some sort. Um, and with this specific um, topic, it's it's incredibly difficult, uh, and that's because it is so psychological. You know, that I I what I'm trying to photograph um, is not something that is viscerally visual. You know, the idea of what it means to be Cambodian um, and the, 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 you know, the, that history um, from the late 70s and, and the, you know, the refugee camps and the resettlement, um, the very idea of trauma is a psychological thing. Um, and that's really the, that's what I, I I'm trying to do with my images um, is to look at this aftermath of this history that I, as a Cambodian American, um, inherited, um, which was framed, you know, very much so via my own personal space, via, you know, initially um, through my own family um, confined to that space. Um, so there's, you know, going back to like this personal history, this personal engagement, it's like this idea of this intersection of one's personal memory, you know, which is as a Cambodian who 
you know, who was born after the fact. I am the generation after, and, and um, I assume that a lot of the readers of, of, of the American, you know, um, are, are of my generation, of course, um, where you were born after the fact. Um, that history is psychological. That history is cultural. That history, you know, it, 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 it is something that we inherit, but we can't really fully understand if that makes any sense. There's a discord between that generation. Um, and that's, that's really nuts and bolts what uh, I'm trying to do with my images. Are, do you think there's any issues that are, that say, set Cambodian Americans apart from the mainstream American society? Oh, oh I, absolutely. I mean, you know, issues is a strong word, but yeah, there, there are circumstances that are, are, are different, of course. You know, that, that the, the circumstances of our existence, even, that, that is, is fundamentally different from all, all immigrant groups, by far, in regards to our, 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 our immigration. Um, you know, I mean, we... Cambodians are, are quite frankly among one of the most you know heavily traumatized people in modern memory um, as a result of what happened in Cambodia and then you know the living languishing refugee camps uh, and then being resettled you know in, in the inner city um, you know that this has path dependent outcomes you know this going back to the very very first photo you know there's this idea of generational transfer of trauma um, and you know, the, the actual mechanism for that is, is debatable um, and is anecdotal. Um, but I feel, you know, strongly that, that, that my community has suffered greatly. Um, you know, my parents and my grandparents, um, and then here in the States, um, you know, particularly the late 80s up to the 90s, um, the community struggled I would say that you know this is, is that that has been variable. I mean, there's you know absolute there there amazing amazing stories of success, and there's no question about that. You know, but um, this doesn't degrade or doesn't deny the fact that that we as Cambodians um, have had a very unique experience. That's in the Bronx. Um, that's the Cambodian Buddhist temple in the Bronx, and um, that was one of the first places I went to when I started photographing in the Bronx because that's you know the, the community center for Cambodians. Um, and what's very, very striking for me, there's two things. Um, the first thing is this idea that, you know, that it dawned on me quite recently when I was photographing that these temples, um, and they're quite important as, as, as depositories of cultural knowledge, right, and, and, and of what it means to be Cambodian. Um, but people my age and my generation don't connect. Um, and the reality is that these temples, you know, will more than likely no longer exists once that generation, my parents and my grandparents' generation, um, you know, are no longer living. Um, so w what that, Im that specific image, um, that day, it was a, a ceremony um, for uh, where the children um, are there to honor their parents. And, you know, for me, that's quite poetic and, and quite beautiful. Um, and I photographed that also, that's in a different edit, um, but that specific image though, if you, there's a wall that separates two groups of people and um, on the right, the, um, the, the youth are there and they're eating and whatnot and on the left, um, there are elders uh, and that division for me, you know, that, that is like the, the physical manifestation of, of this discord generationally. I mean, you know, there, there are families that I've, I've, I've met and I've photographed and I've spent time with um, where there is a complete absence of, of any dialogue as a result of language barriers. And like, that's something that, that, you know, when I explain it to others that, they, that people can't comprehend, you know, if, if you're incapable of having a substantive conversation with your own grandmother or your own grandfather, and substantive meaning, you know, in regards to family history, um, you know, that is, is, is incredibly heartbreaking, you know. I personally 
was I, the first conversation I had with my own grandmother was when I photographed her, you know, and, and I, I had a translator with me, you know, my, my uncle, who translated who, who, who this, this conversation, and it was the first time that she had spoken about anything, you know, before us coming to the States, um, in regards to our family history. Um, and it was very, very emotional for me, to say the least. Um, so that, that, that image is, is the most um, literal manifestation of, of this idea, this, you know, this reality. That is also the Cambodian Buddhist temple in the Bronx. So it was taken in much early period, it was in February of last year. Um, and um, there's this idea of, of cultural space you know, and, and like the, the space that we, we carve out ourselves um, as refugees and as immigrants here in this new country. Um, it was very, very striking for me here in New York and even in Long Beach. You know, the temples are, many, many temples are our former homes. Um, you know, they don't look like temples at all uh, from the exterior other than the signs, of course, and the flags. Um, so this is the backyard, um, and it's a residential backyard. Across from that is another home or another complex, um, and uh, I, 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 this gentleman um, was praying, um, and the light was on was on him, um, you know. And there's shadows around that, um, and I just that it, it was an incredibly beautiful and poetic, you know. Uh, the light was just it was it was everything. I guess, do you find yourself ever facing challenges when you're trying to navigate between, uh, like, Cambodian culture and American culture? I am completely divorced, you know, disengaged from what it means to be Cambodian in every way imaginable. You know, in regards to my cultural influences, my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm American in, in every way. I'm American in the way I dress and the way I talk, you know, the books that I read, the music I listen to. Um, so I feel I feel like an outsider, you know. Whenever I'm I'm there, whenever I, I photograph, uh, I feel always as if I'm I'm an outsider. Um, and it's so weird, you know. It, it's it's incredibly weird. Um, and this is kind of this is also this is very much so the immigrant story, right? That there's that you know these conflicting identities that we all go through. Um, and you know, I, I I I find it yeah I I I I find it less difficult to occupy the space as an American than I do as a Cambodian. And you know, I mean, I, I would like that to come across in these images in one way or another. That may take some more time. Uh, do you think there's a way to make the Cambodian American community more inclusive, perhaps for Cambodians who? Uh, don't speak Khmer or who are not Buddhist. I mean, is there ways to kind of expand oh, think, and make it easier you know, to be accessed? I I think that's. I think that the the Cambodian community is incredibly inclusive. You know, with 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 people like myself and, um, you know, like the 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 community support that I've received while while working on this has been incredibly amazing. You know, and and they. The, the elders, people my, my parents' age, uh, they understand. They, they, they understand um, who I am to some extent, that I am Cambodian, but I'm not really Cambodian. Um, and they're very welcoming, irrespective of that. Um, and if anything, they, they, they want to enable, they want to try to bridge that, that, that gap. You know? um, you know, the, the temples are, are, are open to anyone. You know, I've, I've taken lessons there at the temple with, with, um, with the lone monk that, 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 uh, at that temple. Um, you know, that's one way to, to, to try to connect. Um, you know, Cambodian New Year is, is, is exceptionally festive and, and, and incredibly wonderful. You know, and the amount of community members that come out, irrespective of the city, is quite amazing. And that's inclusive too, I believe, very, very much so. Do you think it's important to try to teach the younger generation how to speak Khmer? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Language is, is, is everything. 
you know, in terms of cultural knowledge. Absolutely. I feel, you know, that I've been deprived of them. You know? um, I remember having a conversation with my mother uh, recently about, about that in terms of like why, you know, why, why wasn't I taught Khmer? Why didn't they speak to me in Khmer? Um, you know, in the reality, my my parents were very, very young. My my mother was ten years old. My father was seventeen when when they were both you know put into the camps. Um, it was, yeah, my mother was seventeen when she had me. My father was in his in his twenties, and they came here. You know, when they were very, very young, and they were both you know they they wanted to be American. Um, so you know, I was this kid where they spoke English to me because they were learning English themselves. I, in fact, I was named Pete in the camp. My legal name is Paul, but my 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 real name is Pete. My father named me Pete in the refugee camp um, because he wanted me to be, you know, American. Um, so yes, I do feel, you know, I, I can understand it. I have, I have an ear for it. I can actually read it, and uh, uh, which you know I learned uh, much much later. Um, and I remember writing a letter uh, to my grandparents uh, and also my parents. Uh, it was just a page, uh, but that felt so incredibly empowering. What I really, um, in the one of the reasons why I've, I've wanted to do this and really look forward to, to this interview is the the fact that you know the listeners and if you know fifteen twenty who knows how many people <laughs> will watch this, but the the probability of them being someone like myself is very very high. You know, either they were born in refugee camps uh, in Kaodong, or they were born here, you know, in our second generation Cambodians. Um, there's this intersection of, you know, of one's personal memory and collective history. Um, and my engagement with this history is filtered through my own family history, my own fa my you know, the space in which I grew up in. Um, and the history that we've inherited, you know, uh, manifests itself uh, psychologically and in that family space. Um, so growing up, you know, the war, Cambodia was an abstract and it was something that, that I didn't, I couldn't comprehend as a kid. Um, and increasingly, as I, when I grew up, um, when I was in college, um, when I learned about that history and started understanding like the uniqueness of my family history also, it, 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 it you know, it, it, it filled my heart with a desire to, to, to understand, you know, at a much more profound, deeper level. Um, and, and this work is my attempt uh, to, to connect with that. Um, and I would, I would, you know, I, I, people who are listening, um, other Cambodian Americans, you know, like photography is one way, but there are many other people who are engaged in this kind of work. And there's this idea of like this generation after, after collective trauma, whether that be, you know, a, a war or the Holocaust or whatnot. And that generation after where the responsibility of, of writing that narrative rests on the shoulders of that generation after. Um, and I feel very strongly that, that, you know, that this fits into that tradition. And I would, you know, um, very much so, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of, I mean, the, the documentary films that have been made, um, personal memoirs, all that, all that connects, you know, and that's so incredibly profound and powerful. But it doesn't have to be that, you know, it doesn't have to be a book, it doesn't have to be a photo project, right? It could be simply speaking to your own parents and speaking to your grandparents and trying to really understand the history which you've inherited, um, you know, and, and that's so incredibly important. Um, and that's our obligation, you know, as a generation now. No, 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 no.